Hello everyone, this is Gautama here and I'll be demonstrating to you uh, the Simulink interface with the Freedom Kit, the Freescale's Freedom Kit KL25Z. So this, this is under the Kinetis KL2X family. Uh, it's a pretty famous kit and uh, uh, there has not been any kind of a video demo especially demonstrating the Simulink interface so I just wanted to get it done. So. Uh, so let us start uh, with the support package. Now, as you can see, uh, you need to visit this link uh, to get the support package uh, as uh, the blocks need to be embedded with Simulink. So for that, uh, we need to get this downloaded and install it, installed. If it takes some time, uh, you need to be a bit patient. Uh, once this is done, uh, you need to install the drivers for the board so that can be basically done through the pemicro site uh, you need to download the open sda and uh, once that is done again depends on which version of the board you have uh, if it's the latest one then the firmware of the board would be the latest but then if it's of uh, 2013 2014 year edition you need to update your firmware as well so over here in the open SDA, you can you get the firmware files, uh, you get the uh, the driver installation executive file. So all you need to do is install the driver. Once this is done, uh, you need to check uh, uh, which version you're running. So let me show you how you do that. Uh, the the latest one. that Pemicro has released is 1.11 uh, uh, so let me just show you that if you open this you can see right the bootloader version is 1.11 with micro boot kernel is 1.05 so this is the latest uh, bootloader version so you need to uh, have 1.11 uh, to run Windows 10 and Windows 8.1 if you have 1.03 1.09 or the previous editions uh, they very well work with Windows 7. So if you have Windows 7 OS, then it's well and good. No problem. You, do, you don't need to upgrade uh, the bootloader version. But if you're working with Windows 8.1 or Windows 10, you need to upgrade it. Not only the bootloader version, you also need to uh, upgrade the application version also to, to 1.18. So all these files and how to do it, everything is very well covered in this website itself. So you can just go through it. Also, uh, there is another way to get this thing done. You, you can uh, go to MATLAB help and you can navigate directly to this info wherein this will in detail tell you how to do it, how to update your bootloader version, update your firmware version. All the steps have been uh, pretty well given in very detailed format. So uh, you can check the MATLAB documentation as well for this. So all you have to do is just search for this keyword in MATLAB help. Uh, so that's how you can get things started with the kit, the Freedom Kit. Uh, now moving to the point, let's go to the uh, Simulink. So this is what I have developed for you guys, basically to demonstrate the RGB LED. So this kit has an RGB LED. Uh, we can have a combination of the red and red light in a uh, red led intensity the green led intensity and blue all of them are together placed in a single led so it's like you can vary the inter intensities of these leds to uh, get a byproduct of a different color so that again i'll be going through in detail secondly it's like uh, this is a simple uart loopback wherein i feed in some data and the same is transmitted so we can observe the same on the uh, hyper terminal app the third is uh, it's just a pwm generation with uh, with uh, a fixed frequency and uh, this is the duty so let me just so that it's very it's easy to understand okay so this is just the duty uh, now let me show you how these blocks 
work and what we have so basically once you download the support package under simulink code of support package for nxp frdm kl 25z board right so over here these are the blocks available for development in simulink so if you compare uh, with the other other manufacturer for example if we compare with texas instruments especially for all c2000 controllers that uh, i had made videos previously you can see uh, over here we have detailed blocks but if i compare with freedom freedom is just like all the basic blocks are there and i i, I somehow feel uh, the uh, the option over here is very very limited so these are the blocks uh, so i'll be demonstrating a few of them and let me just show you uh, this is just a duty okay so now uh, let me show you one by one wherein first let us talk about what this control does so this is direct this is a block which has been directly uh, it's it's a block which can be introduced from this tab so over here this is the rgb led app and is there's no setting inside the block you don't need to do any kind of setting uh, all you have to do is create three constant blocks and feed in 8 bit value so the max is 255 0 to 255 is what you can vary now let me show you how this is done like for example uh, if you have an idea of how rgb works i'll show you a table wherein these are the values over here for these colors so this is the r value this is the g value this is the b value so for example if you want a cyan color right you have to go for r equals to 0 g equals to 255 and b equals to 255 so let's try that and i'll, I'll show you the output how that works so so it's r equals to no, it's just a very small value let's go for 255 green and blue is 255 so this is what so this table you'll find if you google you'll find hundreds of tables such tables with hundreds of colors now this has very few colors but basically you can find lot lot more colors and for cyan as it says r is 0 g is 255 and b is 255 so r i've just given one it's a very minimal value so that we can ignore but green and blue have 255 so now what i'll do is i'll uh, burn this code now before burning the code let me just show you the configuration because this is again very important you need to do hardware configuration because the moment you open a new simulink file you need to configure your hardware so let me show you the hardware configuration uh, it seems to be taking some time let us be patient yeah so in hardware implementation what you have to do is you have to select nxp freedom kl 25z board and then over here in build action you have to go for build load and run and rest it's like i'll explain when the time comes uh, so this is all you have to do in hardware implementation and secondly in solver what you have to do is you have to go for fixed step and in the solver should be discrete no continuous state so this is another setting that you'll have to do so once this is done what we can do is we can burn the code yes it is building and it will take some time to burn till that time let me just set up my camera so that you guys can have a look on the output so it says building yes as you can see now it's now flashing and then you can see the cyan light right so this is the cyan color that we are generating let me show you another quick example so that uh, we get a somewhat a clear idea Mm. 
okay so let us go for a magenta color so magenta is like R is 255 and B is 255 green is 0 so let us go for R with 255 green 0 and blue is 255 so let us dump the code now yeah now it's dumping see this is the magenta color so I hope you can see the reflection too so this is the magenta color so this is the demo uh, for the RGB and you can simply feed in the constant value and uh, you can keep uh, uh, varying the colors. Second, uh, let's have a look at the UART loopback. So what we are doing over here is basically we just uh, feed in uh, data through a terminal app and then we receive the same thing. So we have a receive uh, block and a transmit block. So we receive our data from terminal and then the, uh, the controller sends it back to the terminal. It transmits the same data. So whatever data we get, we directly send it to the transmit block. So let me show you the demo for the same. Uh, it's hyper terminal. Let me open. As you can see, I've already tried it. So if I send a one alphabet see if i send d i get d back if i send h i get it back so what i'm doing is i'm sending just one at a time just one now one number i just send it uh, to the controller and i'm receiving the same back so this is a loop back kind of an operation wherein whatever i write i'll get it back so now as you can see whatever i write i get it back even if i give a carriage return i get another carriage return so we get double enters if you can see. So this is about the serial. When it comes to the serial block configuration, uh, it's UART zero that is connected uh, uh, to the converter. So you should go because for the kit it's UART zero. So you have to be with it. Uh, second, you have a sample time wherein how how soon you have to you want to sample the input uh, data. Uh, and one more thing I wanted to talk about when it's about serial uh, you need to configure the GPIOs accordingly so uh, in hardware implementation you are zero so this is as you can see it's USB TX and USB RX is PTA 2 PTA 1 and not any of the other pins that comes under you are zero so you have to configure PTA 1 and PTA 2 for this kit specially and this is the baud rate wherein you can set the baud rate that uh, interests you so this is about the UART and then the third one uh, it's about the PWM generation PWM generation now over here let us have a look at the block now what it says is like my PWM output pin is PTA5 that is D5 uh, a nice feature over here is like you can see the pin map of the board here itself so PTA5 is over here D5 this is PTA5 and as you can see, the timer that runs for PTA5 is TMP0. So now what the data sheet basically says is like for, for the frequency setting, for setting the frequency, all you have to do is you have to set the timer 0. So let me show you how to do that. You should go to TMP0 and set the frequency there. So that would become the frequency of your PWM. Uh, let me show you it's like it's under timer PWM so TMP 0 so what I've done is I've set the TMP 0 frequency to 5 kilohertz that is 5000 Hertz and I have given a constant block with a duty of 50 50% 50 duty so this is what I'm saying that uh, I need a, a frequency of 5 kilohertz with uh, 50 her 50 percentage duty now let me show you how that uh, comes upon wherein I have a nice MIDAC toolkit which has a DSO in it so let me show you how that works yes so it seems to be connected let me show you the output of the PWM so this is my MIDAC uh, let me enable it okay as you can see now right so let me run it again 
is edge trigger you can see for example yeah so edge trigger so as you can see it's 5 kilohertz and it's 50 percent duty over here so so this is about pwm generation so i hope you got an idea about uh, um, how these basic blocks are available in this uh, freedom package for uh, kl 2 z i hope you all guys uh, understood how this is done how the blocks are configured uh, thank you so much